<laughs> What's up, man? It ain't all right, man. I fucked you, man. It ain't all right. It's not okay. It's not all right with that. None of it's okay. Good, good, good to see you. Come I'm sorry. Time. I'm sorry. Photo release. I ain't releasing no photo. No, you don't have to go. Charge him for that video. <laughs> uh, how you guys doing? Yeah. He's waiting a long time for me to show up, huh? Yeah, Just a time. Just a little bit. Don't no, think about two hours to get Perfect time. Six hours to get man. Oh, man. So. I don't know where to start, what to say. Actually, lost four words today. First time I've seen him since I've been out. No, I've seen him since I've been here, anyway. You didn't like, like uh, pretty amazing to me. Well, you said it's your organic family. That used to, right. not used to somebody lying about me and telling me death row than seeing them out on the streets walking And being friendly. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of tough, isn't it? Pretty damn hard. Um, I remember when, uh, when Steve's name came up, a little bit at the sentencing hearing, my first sentencing. I was like, what the hell, is this? what's this guy got to say? I was your buddy. I couldn't even understand what the hell this was coming up from, you know, I was like... Now they, they, they had waited 18 and a half months till January 4th of 84, 85 to come up with a dream statement. And that was the Friday before the trial started on Monday, so everything after that just something was going to happen, was going to happen. And, you know, the hell you come up with, it takes 18 and a half months to come up with this BS statement. And then when they came up with him, I was like, wow, here's something else now, you know, what else are they going to keep doing? And they kept coming up with stuff, and the more people testified to things, the more they enhanced what the statements were. Or, um, I just say, the more life. they they put them into the mold and that DuPage County wanted them to have it in, I guess. And I just said, I don't know what the hell was going to I knew I was going to death row the first time. The second time, um, I didn't think so so much until... Uh, so the idiot attorney I had turned around and decided not to bring in uh, proof that the shoe print wasn't mine. He decided not to do that until after the trial. It was stupid. And it was amazing that, and it's a good thing to be able to see him here actually because most of the people that lied about me, one way or another have died. And that, that's, that's pretty incredible. I mean, I. I Either they, they resigned because they were in law enforcement, they resigned their positions or they died. Arthur Burrell was the first one who brought my name up. It wasn't actually Alex Hernandez, like a lot of people think. It was Arthur Burrell, Arthur Lee Burrell. And uh, he died in the car accident on the way to Texas and got beheaded. Him and his wife and his kids died in the car accident. Please be upon him. Um, Claudino Martinez turned around and died of AIDS from shooting up. A couple other guys did too. Um, it's, 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 I guess God has his way of sorting out the things, you know? And he's like probably one of the ones, him, that came forward and admitted that they lied. <coughs> Montesano was actually not, didn't come out because of Steve or anything. Montesano came out because when I took over my case, we uh, sat down, Larry, Tom Green, Nan Nolan, and um, Matt Canelli sat down and decided we were gonna investigate the investigators, investigate the prosecutors. And we did that, and we proved that by Montesano's wife herself is the one that came out with it and said no, that they were on vacation in the state of Florida and Miami at the time that the alleged statement happened. And it really bothered her all along that it had happened, that he went along with it, but he had only done so because his co-workers had told him that that really happened and convinced him. So then went down, got airplane receipts, credit card receipts, and affidavits from his family members down there. Then Montesano finally admitted that that is what had happened. And when DuPage was confronted, that, the day I was released, that was the lynch pin right there. When we presented to Kinsella and to Huner and them, they turned around and uh, had to go in front of the mailing and chambers and uh, explain it. They didn't really want to. They didn't want to explain it at all. They didn't want to say what had happened. But they had no choice. Um, there's a lot of people that are misled to believe that DNA is what released me. DNA had nothing to do with it. Neither did, um, you know, <coughs> 
there's I mean, there's so many people that say Brian Dugan came forward. That's why he got released. It's not why he got released. Anybody that's actually interested and actually wants to know, can go get the transcript from Ronald Manning. Day I was released, he stood there. He sat there for about 47 minutes, and he picked up Janina Carico's picture. I'll never forget. He picked it up with his right hand. He said. This is what this case is about. This is what this case always has been about, always will be about, and always, always in this courtroom has been lied about. And then he went on and explained how he has never been lied to, ever, ever, as much as he was lied to by law enforcement and state's attorneys and witnesses left and right on a case, especially a capital case. He said he has never had, not once in his entire transcript, and I bet anybody to show me wrong, did he say it's because of Brian Dugan, directly or indirectly, in any shape, form, or manner, did he say that, nor was it DNA. Contrary to popular belief, and people want to take credit for that, but that is not what happened. Ronald Malian explained his points and his reasoning for releasing me. It's, it's hard, it's a lot harder than people realize going through everything. And um, I mean, even seeing Steve here, it's hard for me. It's, it's, really, it's, it's hard for me to come over here. It, uh, it takes me days to build up to be able to come back through this and go through this. And it'll take at least a week, two weeks to get over it. Um, I've lost, I've lost not only the, um, I lost uh, my entire family. <laughs> I just got custody of two of my kids, Samir Muriel and Rolando Kazoo. And I got um, every other week with Harvey. My mother and I were real, real tight. And my sister, my sister, we don't talk at all anymore. Me and none of my sisters. I've been divorced three times now because of this. Nobody really understands what I go through. What the effects of being kept in that room with the light on 24 hours a day, the torture that they did, and the lies of people, seeing three dates of execution, seeing the warrant of execution right in front of my face, and knowing that it was all lies and lies and lies that people said. And then people, I get in a relationship and they lie and then I just leave them because I can't handle the lies no more. It's been almost 27 years now that they've done this to me. It was 12 years, three months, three days, one and a half hours in there. Next month on the third will be 14 years that I've been out. And everybody expects this law-abiding, happy guy to be around all the time. People try to tell me, well, what do you do with your money? What do you do with this? You know what? Forget all that. What did you do with my mind? What did you do with my right to be able to live free? What did you do to the Caracos? What did you do to the citizens of the state of Illinois? Jim Ryan, Joe Burkett, all these pieces of garbage that are out there doing this to him over and over and still doing it. And they're still haunting him. Now Jim Ryan wants to run for governor again. He thinks I'm not going to be there again. Burkett's going to try the same thing. These people want to keep lying and just doing what they think is okay. Now all of a sudden, Duke is fit to be sentenced to death now. Wait a minute. 27 years ago, when you knew he did it, it, it you were saying he was a liar. Now all of a sudden, oh, now, now, now we're going to find him a death penalty. Now we're going to kill him. I'm, I'm not sticking up for him. I'm just, it's not him per se. It's just any individual. If you say he's a liar and he's no good, he's just that. And then because your political gains is going to be coming around again. Oh, you know what? Hey, we got to go and execute this guy now. 